Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to take a look at continuity. When we're looking at continuity, a graph of a function is continuous if you can draw out its entire picture without needing to pick up your pencil. So that picture that I just drew out, that function or that graph would be continuous because I was able to draw the entire picture without needing to pick up my pencil. But not every graph is continuous. There are functions or are graphs that are not continuous. Now there's a few different types of discontinuity that we're going to look at, but the first one is removable discontinuity. And what removable discontinuity is, is it's basically just a hole in the graph. So if we look at this first picture, we've got our graph drawn out, but there's a hole in it here. That point is missing, and it's not showing up anywhere on our graph. So what we would have to do in order to draw this picture is we could draw out the first part, but then there's a hole in our graph, so we would need to pick our pencil up to move over that hole to continue on the picture of our graph. So that is not continuous, it's discontinuous because of that hole. Now here in this other picture, this is also removable discontinuity, but if we look at the hole in our graph, directly above it there's a point. So your function might be defined for a certain value, but it might not fall within the line of the graph or the curve of our graph. That point might be somewhere else on the picture. But it's still giving us removable discontinuity because we need to pick up our pencil to jump over that hole before we can continue drawing the picture. The next type of discontinuity is a jump discontinuity. So as we're looking at our graph, there's more than just a hole in our graph, but there's a big gap between the two separate pieces. So we're traveling along our first curve, and then we've got this hole in our graph, but it's more than just that because we're jumping up to this entirely different chunk of our graph. So that big gap in the middle is what makes it a jump discontinuity. We have to jump up to the other piece of our graph. And then our last type of discontinuity is infinite discontinuity. So again, we can see that there's a big break in our graph. But here as we look at our picture, this first piece is heading down, and it's going to keep heading down towards negative infinity. And this other piece, if we look at it, it'd be going up towards positive infinity. And what's actually happening here is there would be a vertical asymptote splitting these two pieces of our graph apart from each other. So our graph is tracing, it's following that asymptote down to negative infinity and up to positive infinity. So that's why we have the infinite discontinuity. Now when we're looking for discontinuity, that's going to happen at undefined values of our function. So let's look at the function f of x equals x minus 4 over x plus 3. Now, if we're thinking about the domain of this function, we can't have 0 on the bottom. So I would take the denominator and say that we don't want it to equal 0. So if I subtract that 3 over to the other side, we know that our graph is undefined at x equals negative 3. But to see what kind of discontinuity it actually is, I think it's easier to look at a picture of the function or the graph. So on my calculator, I already have my function typed in, and I know something bad is going to happen at an x value of negative 3, because that would give us 0 on the bottom of the fraction. But when I hit graph, if we take a look at it, it looks like we've got that infinite discontinuity. So we can say that this graph has infinite discontinuity at x equals negative 3. Now we're going to take a look at another example in here. So we've got the function f of x equals x squared plus x minus 6 all over x minus 2. And we're going to look at the domain of the function again. We don't want the bottom of the fraction to be 0. So I'm going to take the x minus 2 and say that we don't want it to equal 0. We would have to add this 2 over to the other side. So we've got a domain issue at x equals 2. But again, to see what's happening with the discontinuity, we're going to take a look at the graph. Now I've already got my function typed in. If I hit graph, it just looks like a straight line. I can't see anything bad happening at 2. But if I go to my table, if I hit second graph, I know that there's a domain error. There's an issue at 2. If we can't see anything bad happening, that actually means that there's a hole in our graph. We can't see holes in the graph because... It's actually infinitely small, but there is a hole at x equals 2. 
Now if we go back to the function, there actually is a way to show that there is this removable discontinuity. And what I'm going to look at doing is actually factoring out the top of my fraction. So the top of my fraction actually factors out into x plus 3 and x minus 2. And then the denominator is x minus 2. And what's going to happen here is we're actually able to cancel out this x minus 2 factor. But that doesn't eliminate the domain issue in here. So when you're eliminating a factor, it's actually creating that hole in the graph. So if we were to take that factor and set it equal to 0, then we would know that there's a hole in our graph at x equals 2. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.